Welcome to Better Business Results. My name is John Witt and I'm your host. Our guest today is Linda Joseph. Linda is the owner of Silver Moon Photography. Linda, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, John, for inviting me on. I appreciate it. So we always start our show with a little introduction from the from the guest. So what is it? What, what does Silver Moon Photography do and, and why do you do it? Silver Moon Photography is a B2B commercial photography studio and we help business owners to differentiate themselves and to strengthen and amplify their brand. Uh, but we do this by telling their story. Uh -huh. I mean, that's what's fun. This is like, it's, it's, it's very exciting because every business is different. I, it, whether they've been in business for a year or five years or 10 years, they have a story to tell. Yeah, and I can see that's where your passion yeah. lies. Yes. Right. So yes. tell me, why do you do? How did you get? Why do you get into the photo, you know the the photography business? Um, it actually started when I was fairly young. Uh, I bought my first Polaroid camera. It was black and white because they didn't have color at that point. And uh, we, my family, went to Oklahoma to uh, visit the family farm, and I took my first photograph of the farmhouse with this dappled light in it and it just it when I could hardly breathe waiting for those three minutes for it to, to develop because that's how long it took back then and when I saw it peeled it off I go oh my god this is what I want to do and uh, there went the babysitting money <laughs> 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 it just, it, it's uh, you know it was it was a really inspiring moment. Almost transformative. Yes, it yeah. was. Totally, totally. How was. exciting is that? Now, yeah. so when you said B2B commercial, right? We're, right. We're, we're, you know, obviously it's business to business and, and it's businesses right. that um, understand and appreciate high quality commercial photography? Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so so I know, I think you said uh, when we talked earlier, when we were, we were getting together for this, that you know, you've done a lot of landscaping and some other types of photography right. as well. Wildlife and nature photography. That's how I started out in the business. Uh -huh. And uh, it, honing those skills actually gave me skills to use for uh, in the commercial business, uh -huh. the commercial end of it. Okay. Um, and... You know, I'm a lot faster. Animals don't stand still. You have to be able to be pretty <laughs> capture. Quick. You do. You have to capture the moment instantaneously, or you've lost it completely. Yeah. So you kind of just graduated from you know some of the passion, right, and then into the landscaping and, and animal photography, and then into business photography, yes. right? Yes. So talk about a little bit about who your who benefits most from because I'm going to guess this is the answer, and this is why we're going there. But who benefits most from your products and services? Uh, the, I, I think that might be a toss-up. I think I benefit the most, but the okay. business, the business owner actually benefits tremendously because it can increase their bottom, the bottom line. They, they, they won't hire me unless they're ready to use good quality photography. I'm yeah, not so right for every, photo for every. Company. So business that understands the value and appreciates the value of high quality. Yes. Okay. Yes. But they're looking to grow their business, right? It's yes, not absolutely. just about pictures. Right, correct. They're looking to differentiate themselves from the competition and the way to do that is to use original photography, original great photography that tells their specific story. If most the since the web is visual these days, most people will just go on to the web and they'll they'll buy eight or ten images and put them on their website and they look like just everybody other salons. everybody else has those too exactly, exactly. well and google google looks for unique yes right that's they part, do. part of the ranking yes. system that gets people to visit your website yes they do that and when you've got original photography um whether you're selling a service or or a product or um, whether you're trying to show your staff off or whether you bring your dog to work, all of all of these things help tell your specific story and make a difference. And people, when they go online, because that's where they do the research first, they go online, they figure out, okay, so this name came up, let's look at what they've got, and if they, they like it, they might actually come see you and visit you. Yeah, so high you quality know, so. photography, 
right? Visuals yes. on your website leads lets people stay on the website longer yes. and, and actually helps the conversion process, right? Getting customers to come in, visit your store, buy your products and buy your services. Yes. So part of it is it generates traffic. Google looks for unique photography to generate traffic to get them to your website in the first place. Absolutely. And then once they're on the website, you've got these photos that literally create this vision and, and, and helps convert them into actual customers. Yes. Right. Okay, so business owners that are looking for that kind of thing, really, would benefit a lot from from your services. Correct. Okay. Yes. So let's talk about the challenges that these business owners typically have, right? Yes. Um, I have one doctor's office. This was actually one of the turning points that helped me discover where exactly my niche is, okay. which is very good. Uh, he's a doctor in uh, Laguna Beach, and all of his patients would go away during the summer months, and his he had no he customers. dropped off. Business no, dropped right. off. And he, he wasn't, he had no web presence, so people who were actually vacationing in Laguna Beach could not find him. And once I did the photography and, and showed, he brings his dog to work. He has all these unique qualities about him. He brings his dog to work. He's right on PCH. You can see uh, Catalina Island and Anna Kappa, for God's sakes, and, you know, on a, uh -huh. on a clear day. <laughs> and, um, but he has his chiropractor and massage therapist, worked for the Ducks for three seasons. All of these make for unique, um, they're just unique qualities that another doctor isn't going to have. Right, right. So, it's so you're able to. So, so the at, at the beginning, you know, I want more patients, right? Right. That's yes. that's the bottom yes. line. Right? Yes. Um, but they need differentiation because there's other doctors out there. Correct. Right? Correct. And uh, do they know how to do this on their own? No, they do not. <laughs> they do not. Right. They this is not you know use your not. iPhone type right. photography. No, it is. It is <laughs> definitely is not. Uh, you don't get the same quality, and you want good quality. And when people then go search, if they see that he brings his dog to work, maybe if they've got allergies to dogs, they don't go. Point, they don't go. But if they're, they're a dog lover, right? They may say, "Oh my gosh, he's perfect." Let's. I mean, go visit him. Let's. You know. Right, so you're able to communicate the kind of the, the internal uh, parts, right? Well, let's talk right. about that. We were gonna. Let's talk about the, the the things that you you know. So we've got an education issue, and differentiation, and more patients and more customers. That's what they're trying to solve. Right. And then, how do you solve those things? I do a discovery process where I talk to them in advance. Uh, some it could be one, two, or in one case, three or four conversations, and. We find out, we, we... We're looking for, what are you looking for in that? We're, I, I want to find out what their story is. Why are they doing what they're doing? What are, what are they passionate about? I mean, that's actually really important. Uh, what do they want to, why are they even doing great quality photography? Mm -hmm. Why do they want to use that? Um, sometimes they already have branding in place but there's no consistency across the line and that's something that I can provide okay. and I do provide yeah so you're the story so. is sort of the essence right yes yes the essence of who they are right, right. we're going to use visual right. media to, to demonstrate this yeah, absolutely right? and that's that's your discovery process yes right yes. but then you've got this quality component too right it's not just that right it's yes yeah I use a higher-end camera than most people who think they're photographers you know 21 megapixels and you know it's it's not a little rebel camera you can't do the same things that right. I can right that that's the bottom line okay and uh, so that and my post-production work just all make the image quality unique. Well, help me understand. When you say post-production, what what do you mean? Right, the retouching. Like I believe every image, every picture should be beautiful. Okay, so if you're doing a headshot, you want you you can They have to look like who they are. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, I mean, that's important. That's totally important. But. Um, but if, like on their jacket, if there's too many wrinkles on the jacket, I just take those, those wrinkles out. Then you can touch out. it up. I, I retouch it, yes. And I find things probably more annoying than most people. Because um, well, so you have a higher quality degree of excellence, right? That, <laughs> yes, More than me, job. I'm certain. <laughs> right. Yeah. I notice detail more than other people, for yeah. sure. Okay, and you can, you can make that post -production. And I can make that. And that's also true, like, even if we're shooting outside like in a lifestyle shoot or something 
where uh, there will be something distracting in the background and I can actually I can either get rid of it or amplify it if it's actually strengthening the image. Okay. You know, so, so lighting like, is, plays a really big role. Oh my God, a lighting is is the key component. You know, you've got the photographer, you've got the camera, you've got the your clients there, but lighting and scenery, backdrop, all backdrop of that. Backdrop, colors, all of those things play a play, role yes. in your quality right. production. Right. I mean, it's a big, big deal. It, it is a big deal. and. Also, I wouldn't photograph everybody at the same location because it isn't right for them. So in that discovery process, one of the things I do is find out uh, where, what, where we should be photographing, how we should we be photographing. Should it be in the studio? Should it be outdoors? Should it be um, in a garden someplace? Huntington Central Park, for instance, or should it be at the new Pacific City, you know, maybe there's other places that need to be, it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what I do. So you've been in the photography business for years, yes. right? Yes. The Silver Moon photography, about six years. Silver Moon was actually there like 20 years ago. Oh, it was there 20 years ago? Yes, yes. But the, the, the this commercial. incarnation, the commercial of, okay, this part has been around for... For six years, okay. yes. Talk yes. to me about your biggest success story. Okay, my biggest success story, and this was fun because there were like four discovery uh, sessions in advance, but it's uh, with Sue Coach, who is a, um, a life coach. She's a life coach, and, yeah. And I know Sue. <clears throat> she used to be in the construction business. So what, it, during our one of our conversations, it's just like, well, that'd be really cool. So then she found this these cute heels pink high high heels okay she got this great belt i found the tools okay oh my gosh all right uh, so it's a collaboration and it's and they're pink okay <laughs> it's just it's very fun and it's if you take a look at her website um everything is just works really really well it is so strong compared to other life coaches. Well, I mean, what's that meant to her business? It has helped to, I don't know how much it's grown her business, but I know it's grown her business substantially. Yeah, well, she's told it's, you that, right? Yes. There's a significant yes. difference, and yes. she's written you yeah. a testimonial. Yes. Lots yeah. of, lots of. All of that, and. Um, Plus, you're just super excited about how that uh, turned out. I know, I, I am. We're actually getting ready, because she's launching a new book, and we've, although we've done the, the shoot for the new book, we're going to be doing photographing uh, some of the artwork for the book. So that's all playing. And that's the one thing with Sue, well, actually with all my clients, we get to play. So is that and a surprise benefit? It's a, definitely a surprise benefit. Most mm -hmm. people think of photography and getting a headshot done is extremely painful. And it's, it, it doesn't have to be. It's not with me. <laughs> it's like, it, it's, we play, we yeah. talk, we have conversations, and it makes it much easier. So what do they say when they're done with the shoot? They go, oh my god, that was fun. I would do this again. I would do it again. Uh, yeah. Well, that's what, what a great testimonial that is. So that's yes. a total surprise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, and I've done my own headshots. You know, I've had some that are a little more interesting than others, and I've had some where I sat on the stool and had to turn this way and turn mm -hmm. that way. That wasn't, the, uh, pleasant isn't how I would call it. Right, exactly, exactly. And I've had uh, one gal who I, I did, started out just doing her headshots, and then we did other uh, work with her. She's a wellness coach health and wellness coach and so we did things with her working out and all you know running stairs and doing a bunch of things but she goes I've tried two other photographers I would never work with them ever again she goes you're it you're the only person I will ever recommend uh -huh. you know it's just it, it's amazing that's what gets me excited too is that kind of feedback I know I'm different and that's how I'm that's one of the ways I'm different small business owner Yes. Thanks for telling us your story and telling us all that information, but you're also a small business owner. Yes. And when we got together earlier, we talked about what it is to be a small business owner and for you, and, and you're growing. Your business is growing. Yes. Right? And one of the challenges that you mentioned is, uh, you know, hiring. How do I get some help? Yes. And um, I now have a couple of resources. UC Irvine will be, I will be working with them. They've got a criteria for uh, doing internship programs so at the f beginning of the year that's that's where I'm going 
because I, I desperately need post-production help and sometimes assistance helping me out on, on shoots. Okay, all right, so let's show them the mistakes curve, right? Now the mistakes curve, this is what happens after you've hired somebody, right? So there is a, there is a challenge to, to hire the right person, right? right? But once you hire somebody, and this is where I see uh, people f make errors all the time, right? Business mm -hmm. owners, they struggle with it. And so if you understand the mis mistakes curve, it makes you a lot more comfortable with sort of this process, the training process and the learning process that a new employee has, right? So here's the curve. It starts out with an X and a Y axis. So the bottom is volume and the, and the, the uh, Y axis is time, right? Okay. And it's just like most curves, right? But in right. the beginning, what we understand is that the volume of mistakes made, anytime you learn something new, the volume of mistakes is great. Right. Depending on the complexity, it could be really great, yes, right? Yes. But over time, right, because we learn from our mistakes, we get a little bit better and we move to a position of proficiency, right? Eventually we make fewer and fewer mistakes, right? right. This is the natural learning curve, right? right? And as long as we're on this curve, we're fine, right? People are gonna make mistakes early. Now there are ways to adjust this curve, right? You can make this curve not quite so wide or maybe not quite so tall. And this is where education, things like books, reading, videos, uh, workshops, seminars, um, a coach, you know, all of these things are designed to reduce that curve um, or you can just accept the curve that's there today, right. right? Now, one of the other things that designs that 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 helps affect that curve is is you know when you have a good solid process, right? Yes. That, that they say hey, take steps one to you know this is the process that you use, and uh, and it, and typically it's written down, right? So somebody could follow it, and it's not just spoken, right? right. Because there's lots of places for confusion in the spoken word. So yes. if we have a really tight process. You know, we can make that curve be a little bit smaller, right? Yes. But the key here is, as long as you're on this curve, you know, I mean, this is nature's learning curve. If you're on this curve, uh, it's the oldest learning tool in the history of mankind. It's called trial and error. You you will get there, right? And then yes. your job as the business owner bringing somebody new on board is to figure out how can I shorten this curve? How can I make this happen? Yes. So as long as you're here, you're good, yes. right? But here's where people get trouble, right? They start looking at this curve over here. Now notice this curve here. This is the failure to learn curve. Right? right, and what happens here, and you notice these are two vertical lines, right? So right. this is somebody that's not learning from their mistakes. Yes, they're going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We always do, but we have to learn from them. If we fail to learn from those mistakes, then we get on this vertical line, right? right. Now this is two parallel lines. Do two parallel lines ever merge? No, never. 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 Ever. 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 Yep. But I get business owners sit here and say, "Well, you know, they're going to get it eventually," uh, and they right. can't. Right. right? Either you're doing something wrong or they're not right for the position. Something's, something's broken. Yes. Something's yeah. broken. Something's yeah. not working. And so yeah. you as the business owner that's looking for this person, you're if they're on the natural learning curve, you're going down the right path. Feel comfortable that, that you're going down the right path. Yeah. And you are on the lookout for this vertical line curve because the sooner you see that, the faster you, is the time you say, look, switch, change, do something different, right? Another day, another week, another month, another year, Nothing's going to get any better. You never get there, right? right. And, and I get yeah. business owners that just say, oh, well, you know, that's just who they are. That's what it is. And they accept it. And in the long run, they don't get the performance that they're looking for from their new hire. Right. This is the mistakes curve. Then we take a look at the other side of this, which is called the good decisions curve, right? And so we have the same y-axis and the same x-axis, right? Time and volume. Right. But whenever you're learning something new, right, how many good decisions do you make? <laughs> not not very many, right? Because no. you don't know any better, <laughs> right, right? right? So when we have a new employee or a new something, right? We don't want to give them very many decisions to make. We don't want right. to even give them the choice to make decisions, right. if at all possible. If we could give them a script to take steps one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, again and again and again, to deliver the quality and res results that you want, right? That's 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 how we have to train somebody in the beginning. That's how you get consistency. That's how you get consistency, yeah. right? right? Now over time, right? they're gonna get better, right? And once right. they get the process dialed in, if they wanna add some things, they say, hey, listen, we could do this, we could change that, we could make it better, right. that's fine. But it's only after they understand the model and the process that you've built 100%, Yes. right? Yes. Because, you know, and we have people who sit there and say, listen, you figure it out. Well, the problem, the way they figure it out is they're gonna make mistakes. They've not done it before. They've not worked for you. They don't know how you think. Correct. Right? They may have a skill in doing what it is that you do, but they don't do it exactly the way you do it. They don't, they're all of those things, and we don't want to give them that opportunity to have to make decisions in right. the beginning. Right. Over time, as they get smarter and they get better, we can let them make more decisions. But in the beginning, we want to minimize those decisions that they make. Right. So understanding this curve, 
right? Understanding these couple of things. And I really like these. I actually learned this from Brian Tracy at a conference a couple of years ago. He tells a story about a bullfighting ring, and I won't get into the details of that, but it's pretty interesting about the learning process and how we can influence the process. So understanding that you're trying to do with bring a new person on board to help you, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, and uh, I've already made the mistake of trying to bring somebody on thinking they knew what they were doing and they don't, you know. So it's, you have to go right Does this resonate line. with some yeah, of the oh things you've God. experienced? To totally, totally. Yeah. You, you have to, I, you know, that's uh, part of what I will be doing is writing out, like creating a manual of what they do in this, you know, for, say, architectural work, what they do for headshot work, and then have them go point by point by point okay. until they get it. So you got to create yeah, the processes. Right. Right? Right. What's the first one you got to create? What do you think? What do you think is the first one that you should write up? What I expect of them to when and how much I expect them to be there. If they say they're going to be there, they need to be there. Consistency and follow through okay. with that. Okay. Uh, so it's almost a behavior. It's a behavior okay. thing, right? Because I've had some interns who want to use their cell phones half of the time they're with me. That's ridiculous. Well, it doesn't work. They can't work when they're yeah, on the phone. Exactly. Right? Yeah. They can't. They can't check their texts. They, you know, so for, forget that. When you're here to work, work. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so when it comes to your product and your post-production work, what's the yes. first thing that you could use some help on? <clears throat> scripting out <laughs> the workload, probably. When you say scripting out the workload, what does that mean? Uh, strategically, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly how I should do it. I even was thinking about maybe a video and pointing, you know, using the screen and and showing them exactly how it's done, but I think written, maybe, and then a video or something. So is this how to build a work plan for your project? Yes. Yeah, okay, because yeah. every project should have a work plan. Yes, These exactly. These are all the tasks that right. are necessary. Right. Right? Okay, so right. how to build a work plan. Right. That might yes. be the first thing that they do, right? Here's all the potential things, right. but for this project, we're going to use these things. Yes. And we're going to put them in this order. Yes. And this is who's going to do it. Yes. And when are they going to do it? Exactly. That's and they have will have certain specific time limits to get things done. Okay. So it, I expect them to eventually be as fast as I am. Um, maybe because they're maybe they will be faster. Well, at some point, but yeah. not in the beginning. Not right? in the beginning. No, yeah. definitely not. Uh -huh. And I don't care at the beginning. All I care is that they learn the process. Okay. You know, that's really key to it. Right, and they're going to be on that learning curve. Yes. Right. As long as they're on that learning curve and they're going to that level of proficiency yes that's that's your key so how to build a work plan is <laughs> is one of the key components right because that yes. way you have a schedule that you could manage to for everything correct right and right. now you can tell people you'll have it when you can be consistent you can have quality what what else is do you have to have from a process standpoint um I'm not. I'm not sure. What Do else. they coordinate with other vendors? Do they? What are what are no, some of the other? What actually, are some of the other tasks <laughs> that you would actually ask your? For the post production, all you really need is for them. I have a, a relatively large office. I have a separate desk for them, separate computer for them. So all I need for them to do is to, if I give them a project, is to do the project and follow it. Follows a lot all all of the. So, what are some of the of tasks that are associated with a project? Well, to begin with, like for architecture, uh, you go in. You s you have to select which images you're going to use for the for the um, for the client. Then you take them into raw photo raw, and you actually you have to do color corrections. You have to do. Uh, graded, there there are a lot of, um, what do you call those, tools that you actually have to do per image, but then you have to, you need to go into the... So are you looking for your assistant to actually to do, do this, this work? Right, right, okay. right. And they actually need to correct for the lens aberrations and things like that. So there, there's a lot of steps for the 
the image for them to do, you know mm -hmm. take care so of. So depending on the type of project, architecture right. being a project, and right. you have other projects, headshots, so headshots, right. right? So what's what are the first projects that you want them to work on and be get good at? Probably headshots. Okay. Because that's the, the most time consuming. Okay. Architecture is pretty straightforward and fairly easy, uh, but the uh, headshots are and um, especially when we're dealing with. Um, older people who have more wrinkles. Uh huh. So, yeah. Well, yeah. We, we we know those. We know who yeah, those I, are, we and know. we're right there. We are. I am. Yes. Uh, but the point is, you you have to learn how to take it out so it's not so obvious, or so that you reduce them. You need to still leave some in. You know, there are qualities that they have to uh, judgmental qualities. You know, I may I may say, well. We need to do a little bit more on this one. <laughs> well, you know that's part of the problem. In the in the photography is is you know there's a science to it, yes, right? It's just yes. you know you remove the wrinkles, but it's not all the wrinkles. There's a little bit of art. There is there to is it art. as well. Yes, right? absolutely. And that's 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 one of the bigger challenges. I mean, we can dial somebody in and say, look, take steps one to ten. Right. Um, but that art component. Now, in the beginning, what happens is they come to you and they say, what art component are we putting into this? Right. Right. So over right. time, they can learn how to become better right. Uh, right at understanding what that what that is it's sort of like when you talked about discovering the essence of somebody right yes you know how do you do that uh, you talk to them and well, you figure you really you have to figure out who they are um, what their story is what what's important to capture how do you know when you got it well it's it's actually in the in the you know when we're having the um, the dialogue or when we're talking and chatting or whatever, we something will be said and I'll go oh, I we need to do that in my own head I say oh, uh -huh. we need to do that and then then I so I we might brainstorm a little bit so then that takes us to the next. So is there a little this, feeling that you get when you hit that spot? Yes. Yes, I sometimes I just go, oh my God, this is it. Yeah, this We're is an exciting person. thing. It is. Right, you've it done this so many times yeah. that you know what that is. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I, I photographed, um, she's a, a training, um, she works with middle management and does training for middle management. And she's trying to combine upper management with the employees. And when we were doing her headshot, we found this one incredible place that had the um, this straight concrete that goes up like this and then all of these fall colored leaves and the merger of the two and I go oh my god this is the perfect place <laughs> you, right. know? you know you just you get it you totally get it and I mean I knew that was the right location but I hadn't thought of, it just came you know it just comes so as the artist right where yes. you have years of experience understanding that yes. right? That's probably the last thing that you turn over to your assistant. Yes, the artistic absolutely. part, right? That's why I do the photography. Right. So the technical part um, is what you can script out. Correct. Right. So that we can follow our mistakes curve, so that we can get better, and then yes. and then once we have a script, we can measure their improvement. Right. They got eight of the steps right. They got nine of the steps right. They got twelve of the steps right. And right. you can actually measure how they're climbing that curve, or did they get stuck on getting eight steps right? They can't figure out how to get nine and ten right. Correct, right? correct. So that tells you where you're at the vertical curve, and now you know where to go attack that. Yes. Okay, yes. so so we talked about a couple different action items for you, right? One of them was um, learning how to build a project plan. Yes. Right? <laughs> Having them build a project plan, here's all the components, right? And, and they, if they build a project plan, that would be really helpful. Because you know what needs to be done and what all the tasks are and how long it's going to take, yes. right? and that's really very effective and very efficient, yeah. right? And then the second one is we said, hey, that's headshots is the is the process that we would work on, right? Correct. First, right? Because that's the most uh, time consuming, uh -huh. and I think it's the most difficult. And but, so if they can get that. They can get anything. Okay, I swear, to right? Me, totally true. Yeah. yeah. So if they build project plans and do headshots first, what's the third thing that you would have them work on? If if they've gotten everything right, we would. Ha I think we'd have a conversation and say, so now you've been doing this for this length of time, whatever it is. Um, 
Do you have ideas or suggestions about how we could improve the workflow or how we could do... Okay, then we can engage them for right. improvement because we really right. want them to contribute. Right, exactly, right? exactly. And they're going to... Maybe they've learned something that they can share with me and it speeds up the whole process. And Wouldn't that be nice? Oh my gosh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Totally amazing. I would I would love that. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Uh, well you've got your action items set yes. for today for our for our little show here and our little expression. Yes. Um and uh so 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 I appreciate your efforts there and uh before we close out the show, your business owner, what are the five what what I don't know, five, three, five, however many insights, what would you share with our audience about your experience and what you've learned about being a business owner? Uh the first is to uh, really clarify and figure out who your target market or markets are. That that took me three years, and it's because initially I didn't have a coach, you know, uh -huh. at all. But figuring that out is um, it will help guide you the rest of the way in your business. And then if you've got multiple markets, you need to be marketing to each of those differently. A little bit differently. A little bit differently, yeah. right. Uh -huh. Because you're not going to attract the same, they're not the same. Yeah. They're, they're all different, they're different people. So that that's for sure one. And then uh, letting go, uh, this has been, as a solopreneur, that that's this is probably the hardest thing letting go of what you don't do well and what you procrastinate with all the time i swear give it to somebody else give it to somebody else like it bookkeeping i'm hiring a bookkeeper this next year yeah <laughs> so, well I, you know and I, I i don't do my i i can do bookkeeping but i hate it i, yes. I number one i don't like it and number yeah. two it really takes me away of what i really should be doing it's exactly it takes me away of my highest and best and best use yes okay. absolutely all right and that's the point um so last year it was the IT department getting that set up. This next year is bookkeeping. Okay. Um, so, and then um, probably, let's see. I think you said something about working on your business. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, by letting go, you'll be able to work on your business instead of in your business. And uh, having a strategy or a plan in place really helps to... Um, it helps in your direction. It helps you to get to the next level. It will help, it will actually, you'll probably get to the next level a lot faster because you're actually doing things uh, for your business, like doing your marketing or doing your... Well, you said you're doing this on a frequency basis. How often are you doing that? It, it depends which it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> but putting together a calendar w is really, really useful. Okay. And, and then sticking to it is the key. Component. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's easier said than done. It, it right? is, it is, it is. You know, managing all the distractions that take us away Right, and the little, the little fires you have to put out or, or whatever. Right, but so that's yes. one of the one of the really important activities, not necessarily urgent, right? If you didn't do it right. today, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Right. But if you never do it, it's... It, right, if you procrastinate. It's like a train I, wreck. Yeah. I have a cl one client I was talking to today and uh, he goes, we never make time for marketing. He hadn't even looked at the images I'd sent him. And he said, we're just taking one full day and we're doing all, you know, all of us are doing it. And I said, that's good, because that's what you need to do. Uh-huh, okay, yeah, good, good. So. What, was there anything else? Um, not that I... Okay, fine, we'll move on. Okay. Um, before we look, the last part of this, right? Tell me about your experience being on the, participating in the Better Business Results program. The show part is this part, right? But we've gotten together a yeah. couple times. Right, and um, this has actually been a really good experience for me because um, I don't think like you do, John. <laughs> it's actually good to have somebody who thinks differently. Uh, you've, like, I have, will take away many, many things, you know, from you. Um, I've learned a lot. I've learned how to, uh, you've also motivated me to, get my script stuff done you know after christmas and get things going okay. and moving uh, so that's a, a very very good thing and I, I know that you're the right person for me to um when i'm ready for my next step you you are the right person um i've worked with other coaches but this has been very different and i uh, the whole process has been different and i really like this
Oh, well, good, know? good. It, yeah. Well, every coach is different, right? Yes. We're, we're all a little bit different. Yes. You know, I have my style. Yeah. Um, uh, and I have a big focus on marketing and those kinds of things. And every coach has a little bit different right, component right, to it. Right. And I've learned things from everybody, so but, so that's good. But uh, no, I like this. This is good. excellent. Good. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you, John, for having me. I appreciate right. it. Join us again uh, next week for the next Better Business Results show. Link below and register to be a guest on one of our next shows. Your video results will be amazing.